What's up guys, can you hear me okay? If you've never been to these live streams before, they always take me a minute to set up because I just barely walked in the door from my day job. I'm not a professional YouTuber. So if you can hear me okay, mention it in the comments so I know. Uh, if you're watching this video after the fact, you really ought to fast forward about three minutes. It usually takes me about two or three minutes to get set up. My camera's over here. I gotta make sure I'm looking at the camera right. Well, this is a good opportunity for us to kind of get into the weeds a little bit on the Trail 429. And it's, it's, a, it's an opportunity for me really to just kind of relax, let my shoulders down. When I've got the, when I'm, when I'm making these videos for YouTube, um, I don't wanna ramble on for 20 minutes or, or, or longer. I, I really try to get these videos as close to, to 12 minutes or, or 10 minutes as I can. They always kind of run a little longer, but this live stream that I try to, I'm trying to do this more often after I post a video, uh, it's just a good opportunity for me to relax a little bit and, and just kind of really talk more openly about the bike. Um, not that I, not that I hold anything back or, or withhold information about the bike, but um, I just want to be really accurate about what I'm saying in that video, uh, so it doesn't get too long. I, you know, just really stay on schedule. And then here we can just kind of, you know, spend an hour if we need to. So. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, it, it takes me a few minutes to, to get going here, so just uh, be patient for a minute. And then if you're in the chat, hop in the chat there and, and uh, tell me where you're from. I'm just opening the chat now on my computer so that I can read the chat as we go. So let's see here. There we go. Let me turn my mute on. All right. We could do to get that camera a little closer, couldn't we? Um, well, hopefully you guys got the opportunity to, to leave a comment uh, below the Trail 429 video that we, that we just had a couple days ago and uh, leave a comment or a question. Um, also, if, if you're in the chat right now, we got about 70 people in the chat right now, hit the like button. That helps uh, Google notify other people who might be interested but aren't uh, on YouTube right now and it might chime their phone and let them know, hey, this is the opportunity to, to ask uh, the questions that you have here. Uh, so let me open up my chat and we'll get going. First of all, I was so excited to go down to St. George, get out of Salt Lake City where it's a little snowy still, go ride some, some dry, warm trails. And uh, man, we had such a good time. Um, I was able to ride the Switchblade and the Trail 429 back to back. Um, I also had a Ripley down there uh, at the same time. So I was able to, you know, spend some time on the Ripley and the Trail 429 and the Switchblade. Um, I just recently rode uh, the Spur, uh, the Transition Spur, and, uh, and I'm, I'm talking about this now because I think this is probably the biggest reason why people come to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm not a consistent uploading YouTube type guy, and so my channel has really kind of developed into, you know, me being a sounding board for, for you guys uh, who are looking to purchase a bike. And, and bikes are so expensive anymore. You know, you're going to spend over five grand in almost any situation. You're going to be spending over five grand, and that's a lot of money. You know, so um, before we get too far in, I just want to because Carbo Rocket actually paid. Oh darn! Is it going to be backwards? Oh my 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 camera flips around. That's great. So Carbo Rocket paid for a sponsored ad, which was incredibly helpful for my channel, it just, it doesn't make a lot of money. So that's a huge thing for me. I have never been given any Carbo Rocket for free ever in my life, even to this day, after having them sponsor that video, I still pay for my Carbo Rocket. They didn't offer me any product for free. They did pay me, however, to, to, to sponsor that last video. And so you probably saw that in the beginning of the video. And, and uh, I just wanna tell you, I've been using this for years and years and years. I, I'm not as competitive as I used to be, uh, in, in my category of racing at all. But years ago, I was more competitive and I, I fueled on Carbo Rocket because it gives you so much uh, stuff. Anyway, click the link in the description down below, go check it out. They've offered our subscribers here, the viewers, 25% off uh, their purchase of Carbo Rocket. So if you currently use it, now you get a discount. If you've never used it, you get a discount to try it if you, if you want. I highly recommend it as I've been using it for years, far before they ever 
offered to sponsor a video on this channel. And that's one of the first sponsors, well, yeah, one of the first paid sponsors I've ever had on the channel. So I thought it was nice to have that. Um, so let me pop out this chat and see where everyone's from. Lee has already got a question out, climbing versus the tall boy. I thought I touched on that in the video a little bit. Uh, audio is good, thank you, John. We got Las Vegas in here, Arizona, San Diego, Santa Monica, uh, Vermont, Utah. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we're about five minutes in here. I think, we're, I think we're ready to get started here. So um, I made a few notes, which I need to remember to do that in the future, but um, I, I got more questions than I thought I would about how this new Trail 429 compares to the previous generation Trail 429. And um, it's just such a different bike that um, maybe it, it wasn't on the, uh, on the forefront of my mind when I was riding it, but I've given it more thought since then. And the previous generation Trail 429, for those of you who, who own that bike or who have demoed that bike and, and ended up not buying it, um, I would say the biggest difference is, is this bike is far more usable. This current Trail 429 is a more usable bike than the previous Trail 429. The previous Trail 429 would really show your mistakes that you made on the bike. It was a more, it, I don't know if it actually was a stiffer frame or not, but it felt, it felt more stiff to me than this current bike. Again, I haven't ridden them back to back, but the previous generation, the, the second generation of the Trail 429 was a very precise bike, which, it's like a double-edged edge sword, right? Um, when you're railing these really uh, buffed and smooth, flowy trails, even at high speeds, it just feels like you're on a roller coaster, like you're on rails. It's just one of the most precise bikes I've ever ridden, and that's what drew me to that bike. The harder part of that previous generation Trail 429, that's what we're talking about here, is that it would kind of, it would kind of penalize you if you made a mistake or, or a poor line choice, or if you're coming off something and, and landing, you know, either a jump or a dropper or just whatever, you know, you, 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 you kind of manual a section of the trail and you come down and it's just not as forgiving. This current Trail 429 is an easier bike to ride, not as, you know, not quite as precise necessarily as the previous generation, more usable, more forgiving, easier to ride, softer, not that it's soft, it's not, it's not as soft as like a Ripley, for example, but it's just a, a, it's just a better every man's bike, it really is. So I think that they took a lot of what the previous generation Trail 429 had, and they just made it better. And it's just so different. They, they, they made it a mini switchblade. That's, that's the best way for me to describe it, is it, it, it feels like a switchblade, but, uh, but even easier to ride. Honestly, it's really cool. It's a really, this new Trail 14 has a really cool bike. And as you can tell from that video, or at least hopefully you can tell from that video, I really, really liked it. Um, I, I, could, I could build a case for just about anyone uh, to purchase a Trail 429, a Pivot Trail 429. They're kind of expensive. That, that was another comment that a lot of people made is that the build kits, and I, I guess I didn't pay attention to this, and I'm on their website now in front of me. Yeah, the, the most affordable, their entry level purchase, uh, bike purchase is $6,699 US. And I guess I didn't think about that, but I also went over to Ibis's website and to build a similar, you know, a, a bike with similar kit, you know, XT and, you know, a similar build level on, on Ibis's website for the Ripley is $6,299. So what is that, $400 less? I mean, at that point, $400 is not that big of a deal if you're spending 6,500 bucks on a bike. But uh, yeah, I guess that's a really good point about this bike is that it's not, it, they don't have a $3,000 aluminum option or, or a $4,500 like, like the Ripley, Ibis Ripley. I think they have a $4,500, let me double check. Okay, they have a, they have a $4,200 Shimano Dior option. Yeah, so... Yeah, I don't know what Pivot's doing. I'm not the marketing guy at Pivot, or I don't know, but but here's the thing. And I really would love to get a hold of an engineer or, or maybe even Chris Kokalis from Pivot or someone at Pivot who knows. 
In terms of value, the value of the Trail 429 is, in my opinion, totally there. Absolutely, 100%. I know they don't offer a more affordable bike, a, a, a lower you know, barrier to entry bike in that $4,000 price range like Ibis does, but that DW link on the Trail 429 is, I believe, unmatched in what it does, in the, <laughs> the kinematics or whatever it is. I, I don't know all the nerdy, I've never worked in a bike shop and I've never talked to an engineer at a bike company, but I don't know how the suspension on that DW works entirely. But I can tell you it, it's, it's second to none. It's just incredible how well that bike climbs and descends and just does everything. It's, it's really impressive. So um, yeah, it's a bummer they don't offer a, a lower level bike. I've been telling people for years and years and years, and, and, and you guys know at this point, Salt Cycles is my bike shop at this point. Uh, they weren't four years ago when I started YouTube, but in the last couple of years, they have certainly become my bike shop. And I drive past three or four bike shops on my way to Salt Cycles. And the reason why is because you guys, they have been so generous to me in, in supporting me and what I do here. And, and what I do is really... Uh, I mean, believe it or not, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time tracking down these bikes and, and, and getting, anyway, they've been incredible to work with. But I, and the reason why I'm telling you about Salt Cycles is because I have been telling people for years that if you are on a budget and, and you don't have a lot of money to commit to, to this sport or this hobby that you're doing, then you really should consider the giant trance. And I've stuck with that. I still, to this day, think that giant trance for, you know, that aluminum giant trance for $2,800, or maybe it's $3,100 now, I'm not sure, but is such a well-rounded, good, do-everything bike for a good value at that $3,000 mark, right? And Salt Cycles can't sell you a giant trance. They're not a giant dealer. And um, so I just want you guys to know I've done my very best to maintain you know, my, my own moral compass or integrity in pointing people in the right direction as best I can. My YouTube channel certainly isn't like an entertaining, it's not an inter entertainment value channel or, or high production value. I don't, I don't, I barely know how to edit. It, it truly is a, a place for me to share my experience riding bikes, different bikes, lots of different bikes, as many as I can get my hands on with you uh, in an effort to be uh, a sounding board for you or a voice of reason for you to, to help you find your bike, right? And if I don't answer your emails or your questions in the comments section down below my videos, it's not because I don't want to, it's just I literally have like six or seven emails from the last four or five days that are four minutes worth of reading on, on how to help people on their next bike choice, okay? So it's not that I don't wanna get back to you, but I'm trying to produce these videos in an effort to really help those who either don't have the opportunity to buy a bike or they really are feeling stuck. They've got that paralysis from analysis, uh, from analysis you know, looking at so many different options. So um, in terms of value, I know it's an expensive 66. Let me go back to their website. That Trail 429's entry level bike is 66.99. You know, it is what it is. Uh, in terms of value, I think it's an incredible value. It's such a good suspension platform. The bike is so good. The geometry is so good. Um, and I know I took some flack for this a little bit in the comments section, and, and rightly so. I'm five foot eight. For those of you guys who, who don't hear me say that about a million times in every video I do, but what, whatever. I'm five foot eight. I ride medium bikes all the time. I rarely ever ride any other bike. Occasionally, on the Yeti SB140, I considered you know, spending more time on a small SB140, because that, that felt like a long bike to me, but most of the time I'm on a medium, right? And uh, where was I going with that? Oh, uh, I think that this, this seat tube angle, that, that's what I took some flack for, some people who said, well, I'm 6'2", or I'm 6'5", and, and I really do like, like the industry moving to these steeper uh, seat to a angles, right? Because their saddle is so much further above the, the, the top tube and, and, and where the seat tube angle or the seat tube and the top tube meet, um, that they're riding almost back off the back axle, right? And I obviously, I'm not experiencing that because my, my saddle is not that far out of the, you know, the, the, where the seat collar is, right? So, I, yeah, I guess take that part of what I said with, with a grain of salt, just remembering that 
I'm five foot eight and my saddle is not that high. So this geometry, what is it? 75 and a half degree seat tube angle. I'm just clicking on it now. Yeah, 75 and a half degree seat tube angle, 66 and a half degree head tube angle. Although I wrote it in the lower, the lower setting. So 66 degree head tube angle, 75 degree seat tube angle. I thought it was so good. I thought it was perfect. Tons of room to operate in the cockpit, move around, push the bike around, separate myself from the bike as needed, and then you know, load up the front. Let's talk about loading up the front of this bike. And sorry guys, I have not had a second, a minute to, to hop into the chat and, and read your guys' comments because I'm just rambling on and on. Um, but uh, but I, uh, I wanna talk about these new modern geometry bikes uh, like the Yeti uh, SB130, right? Um, these newer geometry bikes require the rider, the user, in, in most situations, and who knows, I'm not a mountain bike coach, but you really got to load up that front. Let's talk about the, the, the transition spur, since that's a relevant bike here. It's a very similar bike. The transition spur is going to require the rider in my experience, your mileage may vary, right? But the transition spur is gonna require the rider to really load up that front end through corners. Otherwise, it will, will tend to feel a slight um, oversteer uh, sensation through corners. Um, and it's not the most critical thing in the world. This, this really is more, you'll become more aware of this as you ride these bikes harder and push them more closely to the limits of the bike, right? So that's what I was talking about in the video. And this is why this live stream is, in my opinion, worth doing and worth being here if you're considering this bike because the Trail 429 geometry allows me to ride the bike more easily. I can, I, I don't have to be charging up front all the time, even when I'm riding the bike very, very hard towards its limits, right? Um, I have more opportunity, more ability to operate in different positions uh, in relationship to the handlebars and the saddle and still feel incredible traction in the corners at speed and confidence always. That's what I like about the geometry of this bike so much, right? Now, the Yeti, I'm just going to pick on the Yeti SB130 right now, which I love that bike. I love that bike when I'm riding at my very best. But once I start to get fatigued and tired and it's been a long day or I didn't sleep well or who knows what the myriad of excuses I might pull out of my hat. But when I'm not riding my very best on the SB130, I hate to pick on that bike, but it shows. I, it, it, it shows me where I'm not a good rider and that's a big deal to me because when I'm riding a bike, I want to be having fun. I'm not getting paid to ride bikes. I'm not racing. I'm not... You know, I'm not all those things. I just want to have a good time, be safe, uh, get the most out of it, maybe experience some new things, learn how to jump better, hit a drop, or all the same things that you guys are doing when you go out on your rides, right? So, uh, yeah, I just think that the Trail 429, this current Trail 429, allows you to do that almost better than any other bike in the category, right? Better than, uh, better than the Transition Spur, for sure. Better than the Yeti SB115. The 115 is a really fun, playful, easy to ride bike also. I actually like that geometry quite well, you know, really well too. But it just doesn't do what this Trail 429 does. So for me, if I'm going to spend that kind of money, you know, seven grand on a bike, I would have a hard time picking an SB 115 personally over a Trail 429. Let's get to the topic that I think a lot of people are waiting for, which I'm a little bit reluctant to just, bleh, you know, tell you about right now, but the Ripley. The Ibis Ripley, I rode two seasons on it. I bought that bike in March of 2019. I uh, rode it all the way through till the, I sold it in, sold in like uh, September or October of, of 2020 anyway. And I sold it in an effort to find my next bike and uh, rode the Yeti 115 quite a bit. I rode the Revel Ra uh, Ranger, which, man, <laughs> Oh, the stupid Revel Ranger video. So when I recorded the, the, the part where I'm talking by my stupid fence, 
I was, it was freezing cold, first of all. I had to film that, I had to film the Rebel Ranger video three times. And the reason why is I, I went up and I think I forgot my SD card and my GoPro the first time. And it's freezing cold, it's, it's October. I was freezing. And uh, I forgot my SD card. I didn't realize until I got to the, the top, I think. And I was like, are you kidding me? It's like, I can't, I can't record anything without an SD card. And so, whatever, that day's shot. Rode the Rebel Ranger. It was fun, but it was freezing cold. I think it was maybe the next day or, or maybe two days later. I go out again. I've got everything. I get up there, and it's, it's so cold. And I get my GoPro turned on, and within... I kid you not, within like 20 seconds of me starting to go downhill and at the top of Jacob's Ladder in the cold, let's say it's 32 degrees outside or whatever it is, 34 degrees outside. As soon as you start descending, you get up to like 32 miles per hour in some areas of that trail. My buddies on Strava are all recorded at 37, 38 miles per hour down that trail. So get up to over 30 miles per hour and it's freezing cold outside already and it just zapped the life out of my GoPro and my gimbal. So I couldn't record then either. I waited a couple more days and it warmed up to like 41 degrees or something anyway. Long story short, the reason why the Revel Ranger video has never been published on my YouTube channel is because I was wearing this big jacket the day that I, I rode. And my little lapel microphone thing that I clip onto my shirt so you guys can hear me when I'm talking by my fence at the end, it was rubbing against my plastic clip on my helmet. It was just making this terrible noise every time I moved just a little bit, just like this. Anyway, Rebel Ranger video, the audio is total garbage. And so that's why we don't have that video up yet. Um, I'm not gonna upload it when you guys have to listen to this screeching, muffling noise the entire time, it's terrible. I need to figure that out. Anyway, uh, back to the Rebel Ranger. Uh, I rode that bike, the Yeti USB 115, the Transition Spur. Uh, it seems like I rode some other bikes that are in the kind of 120 category. At any rate, nothing's really speaking to me enough to really pull the trigger on something and, and replace my Ibis Ripley. So, go through winter, go through Christmas. And, you know, I kind of heard some rumblings that, that the Trail 429 was going to get reworked. I used to own the Generation 2 uh, Pivot Trail 429. I love that bike for, for a lot of reasons why, why it was so good. So I thought this could be it. So um, it comes out, I ride it. It's incredible. Climbs incredibly well, right? I, I think I've made that abundantly clear and I don't want to belabor the fact that it's a very good climber, but there you go. One last time. Descends well, does all this stuff well. I ride the Ibis Ripley, you guys. Oh, I ride the Ibis Ripley just two days after, or a day after, yeah, two days after I ride the Trail 429, I ride the Ibis Ripley again. That's just my bike. That's my freaking bike, you guys. Like, I get on it and it just feels like home. Like, it just feels so good to me. And it doesn't, I don't think it climbs better than the Trail 429. And it doesn't descend at speed quite where that Trail 429 descends. But, I called Chris at Salt Cycles and I ordered another Ripley. I just did. I just love it. I, and look, I'll let the cat out of the bag here. It comes down to the fact that I weigh 140 pounds and Ibis specs their size medium trail bikes with a, a DPS Fox shock that has a light traction tune. The tune is different on the shock to, to the benefit of lighter weight riders like myself. The first time I ever rode a, a light tune shock was on a Yeti SB100 a couple years ago because they offered the women's version, which is called the Yeti Betty. It's that bright pink bike. I rode that thing back to back with a Yeti SB100 and I was like, I told Chris, I was like, what is going on? I like the pink bike, the, the Yeti Betty, the, the women's version better. I don't know what it is. Well, over time, I realized that, that the Yeti Betty had a light tune, a light traction tune, or a, light, a lighter weight tune. Anyway, it makes the shock more available to, 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 to use for lighter weight riders like myself. Sometimes, let's talk about the switchblade. This is a great segue into the switchblade, actually. And, and we'll talk more about the Ripley in a minute. So we'll get back to the Ripley. But 
it's a good segue into the switch into the switchblade only because the switchblade for me, I own the switchblade. If you guys don't know that, I used to own the switchblade. I probably put 400 or 500 miles on a pivot switchblade. The current generation, that green one, green and blue and whatever, the white one. I had a green one. I put like four or 500 miles on that bike and I really loved it because of how good it climbs. It out climbs everything in the category. It's insane. And that's important to me. I like bikes that, that make me look good climbing and feel good climbing, right? So the switch blade every once in a while, I just kind of get this little, like I just get overwhelmed on descents. It was almost like, it was weird. The bike felt so plush all the time, but every once in a while, I'd like rattle my teeth out of my head. And uh, I didn't know what was going on. I'd start messing with the settings. We changed some volume spacers two, two, two or three times on that bike in an effort to, to figure out why it would do that sometimes to me and shatter my face off. And uh, I just think it comes down to, for me, and the Trail 429 hasn't done that to me in the three days that I've ridden the Trail 429. I don't get that same chattery, overwhelming feeling, but I certainly don't get that really soft, supple, ah, that's the wrong word too. I don't know how to describe it, guys. The, the small bump is really good on that, that Ripley for me. And I love it. Um, the bike for me, sorry guys, the Ripley feels a little bit more sporty, a little bit more <clears throat> easy to maneuver and manipulate. Again, I've got so many hundreds and hundreds of miles on the Ibis Ripley, oh, thousands of miles on the Ibis Ripley. So it's, it's pretty easy for me to get on that bike and say, sign me up, I'll do that again. And so, you know, if there was something that had come out that just really well, something did come out that blew me, blew me away. It was the Trail 429. Look, it's like I said in my video. I could flip a coin and whatever it landed on, you know, Ripley one side or Trail 429 the other, I could go with that bike. But for me, the coin for some reason just always lands on Ibis Ripley. It just does. And, uh, you know, maybe there is some bias there. I would imagine there's bias. Obviously, you guys got to know that. I, I have certain biases. I, I like the way the bike looks maybe. Although I actually don't think the, the Ibis Ripley looks better than the Trail 429. Anyway, um, I, I feel like I'm getting a little rambly right now. So I'm going to hop in the comments. I've seen a couple super chats. If you guys aren't familiar with super chats, that's a way for you to, I guess, send me like a little tip, which is kind of nice. So Venture Apparel Company says, keep up the good content. Yum, yum. All right. Thank you for the encouragement. I appreciate that. Um, I thought we saw another one in there too. Let's see. Yep. Right there. So D Allison, thank you for the $5, the $4.99 super chat says, where would you rate the trail 429 on descending compared to the Delano? The Delano is a bike, a similar kind of bike that's made by a company called Fazari. Um, any plans to demo the 429 Enduro? Ah, the Enduro, you guys. I haven't even talked about the Enduro, and that's the comment I probably got the very most in the comment section below the video. You guys all asked me a million times what I thought about the Enduro build, I never wrote it. So any plans to demo the 429 Enduro? Uh, is, would it be a better all-arounder, he's asking? He says, thank you. Um, man, I don't know, I think, uh, excuse me just a minute. Sorry, I've been talking so much, I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit, so I gotta get a drink here. Coco Joy, not sponsoring my channel. Freak. These guys used to not sponsor me, but they used to send me free Coco Joy, which this stuff's expensive. It's like $2 a bottle, a, a can. So now my wife has to go to Harmon's, the grocery store, and buy it, because these guys don't send it to me anymore. Uh, anyway, Trail 429 Enduro. I kind of answered most of your questions with the obvious answer, which is, dude, I don't know about the Trail 429 Enduro because, hey, Bill, you're in here. Thank you for uh, moderating. I didn't see you in there. I was worried. Thank you. Bill is our moderator tonight. Keeps us all happy and healthy. Oh, man, that is so good. That is so good. I wish I had a way to get sponsored by these guys. So... I'll, I'll just do the quick answer that I gave everybody in the, in the actual comment section below the video, which is I didn't ride the, 
the Trail 429 Enduro. So I don't know how to answer your questions unless you want me just to shoot from the hip here. But my quick answer, my quick answer is I wouldn't buy it. And that's probably gonna break a lot of your hearts. And then you'll say, well, Yum Yum didn't even ride it, so I can't believe him. And you shouldn't believe me because I didn't ride it. But this is my thought, so stick around for two seconds if before you leave because you're pissed that I, I didn't say, oh, it's gonna be an awesome bike. Here's the thing. The beauty of these short travel bikes is that you can build them up kind of lightweight. I don't wanna ride a 29 or a 30 pound or even a 28 pound 120 mil travel bike. You can build up an Ibis Ripmo to be 28 pounds pretty easily. Not that hard. The previous or the current switchblade, I think you can build it up. My switchblade, I put, I threw all the money at my switchblade. XTR, MV Wheel, everything. It's the, all the lightweight stuff. And I got it down to 28 and a half pounds probably, right? So you can get that bike a little lighter, but you gotta throw a ton of money at it. Trust me, I threw a ton of money at my switchblade in an effort to get it lightweight. So the beauty of these 120 mil travel bikes is they have this really light swing weight. I hate to use the word swing weight because that's a skiing term when you have skis that have a, a light swing weight, but it's slightly relevant you know, to, to the bike world too. So the, the Trail 429 has got a pretty light swing weight compared to like a Switchblade or the Ripley has a lighter swing weight than the, than the Ripmo, right? So the beauty of those bikes is they can kind of handle like 95% of everything most people ride. You know, on some really hairy situations, maybe you slow down a little bit, but most of the time, it's the bike to be on, a 120 mil travel bike, in my opinion, and what I see other people out there riding. So why do you wanna throw a DPX2 on there, a high volume uh, piggyback shock that won't overheat as much and keep the oil in the, in the shock cooler? Okay, I get it, but I don't know why you need it on a 120 mil travel bike necessarily. And then you throw the Fox 36 up front, you know, maybe if you own one bike, that's that, that makes sense. But here's the thing. The Switchblade climbs so dang good already. Like, so good, it's insane, right? That, for me, my advice to my buddy, or to my brother, if he's saying, hey Jay, wh which one do I get? My advice would, would be, you know, get the Trail 429, the basic one. I don't think, uh, I don't think it's gonna hold most people back. Now, if you're one of these guys who are sending it, and, and remember, I should, I should mention, there's a local ski resort that does mountain lift service. I mean, they've got downhill tracks that they used to race on. They used to be World Cup, world-class downhill racing, like downhill bikes at, at Deer Valley. And I took my generation two, the previous generation, Trail 429, with the standard 130 millimeter Fox 34 fork, just the standard bike. I took it to Deer Valley and I rode all those trails that people just 10, 12 years ago were racing downhill bikes on. And my Pivot Trail 429, the previous generation, the less capable, in my experience, Trail 429, I took it and I rode all those trails. You know, and I rode them fast. I was keeping up with all my, well, pretty much keeping up with all my buddies on their 150 mil travel bikes, right? I just think these bikes are far more capable than we give them credit. And the reason why is because most people, and I don't want to offend anyone here, but I think most people are overbiked, truly. You know, I think most people are overbiked. And it's, you know, it's kind of fun to be overbiked in some situations, but frankly, in most situations, I'd rather be on a 120 mil travel bike and just pick my line through the short bits of trail that require a bigger travel bike. And then the rest of the time, you've got an agile, sporty, bike that's gonna give you a better experience and match and mirror your trail and your speed far better. That's my two cents on the, the Enduro. And I know I didn't, I, I didn't get a chance to read the whole comment section. I'm sure I'm getting flamed in the comments, or not the comment section, but the chat about this. But you know, I haven't even ridden the, the Enduro model yet. So cheers, that's my, that's my story. All right. So D. Allison, thank you for the $4.99 super chat. I hope I answered your question. Uh, comparing it to the Delano, the Delano doesn't compare in any way, not even close. 
in terms of like sophistication, the DW Link on the Trail 429 is a ACT score of 36. And the Fazari Delano is like an 18, which is like less than my high school average ACT. So, you know, not even close. Just the value of the Trail 429, even at $6,600 entry, the value is there. Now, if it's not your budget, it's not your budget. I also think the value is there on uh, uh, the Maestro Link suspension on the Giant Trance at $3,000. But there's no way in hell I would ever tell anyone to go buy a $7,000 Giant Trance. Why would you do that? I mean, I, I hope I'm not offending someone right now who just spent seven or $8,000. My wife's looking at me like, bring it down, <laughs> tone it down. But seriously, You'll never hear on my channel, not in a million years, you'll never hear me tell someone to go buy a $7,000 Giant Trance. It's insane. In my opinion, in my experience, it's insane. Okay, see ya. Bye. Um, she has to go pick up our daughter from dance. So I'm babysitting the other kids and doing a live stream at the same time. Um, why would you do that when you could go buy a $7,000 Trail 429? The suspension, I'm telling you guys, it's insane on the climbs, particularly. Most bikes descend pretty well. Some get a little sloppy in the mid stroke or bottom out too, too aggressively, but man, most people can, most bike shops, bike manufacturers can figure out how to make a bike go downhill. How to make it, that, not all bikes are going uphill. That's, that's my story. That's for sure my experience after four years of riding a ton of bikes. A three, $4,000 giant trance, green light. $7,000, pump the brakes, shop around, go check out the Ibis Ripley, go check out the Trail 429. Uh, there's other bikes out there. Um, I digress, let's move on. All right, Ben, uh, Ben, uh, Ben with the $5 super chat, thank you, sir. Jason, I bought the Enduro today. It's a quiver killer. It's only uh, a little over a half pound heavier than the, uh, than the 130 millimeter option. Maybe you will change your mind. Oh, it's, I'm sorry, it's Brent. Um, Brent, hey, you know Brent, you actually bring up a really good point. One of my really, really good friends, Luke, my buddy Luke Mendenhall, he's a big guy. He's six foot four, 225 pounds, and he wants a bike that's fast. He didn't want the Ibis Ritmo or the uh, Pivot Switchblade. And so I said, you know, you know, and he, he doesn't charge quite as hard as uh, some of my other buddies. So I said, you know what, Luke, why don't we, why don't we get you on an Ibis Ripley? This was, this was last season, so the new Trail 429 hadn't come out yet. Um, let's get you on the Ibis Ripley and let's put a Fox 36 up front at 140 millimeters. So kind of like what Brent's saying here. You know, maybe, maybe the Enduro is the quiver kill, killer, changed my mind. Well, I rode... Uh, my first season on the Ibis Ripley with a 130 millimeter fork. But the whole second season, guys, I bumped the travel up to 140 mil. It's only 10 mil more. Didn't change the bike all that much. But Luke's bike, six foot four, 220 pounds, 25 pounds. Fox 36 set to 140 mil. The dude rode it everywhere. And we went and rode some gnarly, sketchy trails. And he felt awesome. So you know what, Brent? There is space here for me to be wrong. I haven't ridden the Enduro bike yet, the, the, the Trail 49 Enduro. I could be wrong. Um, you know, Chris Kokalis from Pivot actually sent me an email, you guys, and just said, hey, I, I, I saw your review and, uh, uh, you, you know, I, I heard a comment in there where you said that, you, you, you know, he, he mentioned in this email to me, this is the owner, Chris Kokalis of Pivot Bikes, emails me, which was pretty cool. But uh, he says, you know, there's a section in your video where you said, you know, you weren't sure if the Trail 429 quite eked out the, the Santa Cruz tall boy uh, in the descending department, in the get rowdy department, in the, you know, bottomless hover bike section of, 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 the, of the experience, right? And he said, I need you to test the new Enduro. That's what he said to me. He said, I want you to get, go talk to Chris and Salt and see if they can get you on an Enduro bike or on the Enduro build with the DPX2 rear shock and then the, the, the Fox 36 up front. So look, Brent, thank you for the $5 super chat. There is space here absolutely for me to be wrong. Like I said, I haven't ridden that bike yet, but uh, 
I don't know, if my brother calls me or if my buddy Luke calls me, I'm gonna tell him just to get the standard trail 429. So hope that, hope that helps. Um, all right, man, look at the super chats tonight. Thanks guys, I, I, I appreciate the tips. I mean, thank you very much. Tommy Martin says, let's scroll down, says, nice haircut. You like that? Keeping it nice, yeah. I do my own haircuts. I don't know if you guys know that. I'm a total cheap ass. So when it comes to spending money, uh, I pay someone to mow my lawn because that takes me hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. And so I can pay a guy to mow my lawn. It costs me 50 bucks for him to mow my lawn. That's a good deal, I think. I'm not gonna go pay someone 30 bucks to cut my hair when I can do it myself in like 15, 20 minutes. I've been cutting my own hair since I was 19 years old and I'm 38. Almost 20 years I've been cutting my own hair. And uh, I do it so that I can not have to mow my own lawn. My own lawn takes almost two hours. So that's two hours more I get a bike each week. So you guys learn how to do your hair, own hair. The, the problem is I can't do anything but this. This is the one haircut I've been wearing every three to four weeks for the last 20 years. And my wife hates it, but she hates that it's so short. She likes it after like two weeks, but this is the only one I know how to do. I just put the attachments on and I do it. It's great. So Tommy Martin, thanks for the $10 super chat and I like my haircut too. Okay, uh, Githyank176, $5 super chat. Thanks, bud. He says, Jay, would you consider adding an angle headset to your new Ripley to slacken it out a bit like the AF? That's a really good question because when I was riding the Trail 429 down in St. George, those were the same trails that I demoed the Ripmo, or excuse me, the Ripley AF for that video uh, because it was winter and that's where I ride in the winter is down on those St. George uh, trails. And I remember riding on the Trail 429, charging hard and thinking, you know what? This ekes out the Ripley on the, on the descent, but I didn't think it maybe, maybe it didn't you know, eke out the, uh, the Ripley AF. I remember distinctively thinking that. And look, that's another reason why I love doing these live chats. It gives me this opportunity to really think more about my experience. And yeah, when I was riding that Trail 429 charging, just hammering, following Kevin on his Yeti SB150, well, one day he was riding on, on his SB150, and then the day that we filmed, uh, I was he was riding the Switchblade because we were switching back and forth. But on day one of the first time I rode the Trail 429, he was on his Yeti SB150, which is a massive bike. Just such a capable haul the mail, go mock chicken type bike, right? And uh, I was right there on his wheel the whole time. And then the second day he's riding the switchblade and the same thing, I'm just on him like glue and to the point where when we stopped to like regroup at the end of this kind of janky section, right? He turns around, he's like, holy crap, dude. I could hear you the whole time just like nipping at my heels. And I was like, Dude, it's like the little engine that could, this, this Trail 429, 120 mil travel bike. That's why the value is there, you guys. That's why, that's why Pivot can charge 60, 700 bucks is because this bike is different. It's just a charger and it's awesome. So uh, yeah, I would say it's more like the, I would say the Ripley AF is probably more closely to that Trail 429 than the, than the Ripley. So to answer your question, you know, would I put a, a, an angle set on my Ripley uh, to make it more similar geometry to the Trail 429 and the Ripley AF? Uh, my answer is no, I wouldn't. But that's because I always own a couple bikes at a time. And that's the other thing I probably need to make, you know, remember to say more often on these videos is like, remember that, that I always own at least two mountain bikes at a time, right guys? So for me, I don't wanna like get my bike, my Ripley. My Ripley's my short travel, sporty, fun, go do long days in the saddle type bike. So I don't wanna just get that too much, too enduro, you know, I don't wanna endurofy it, so to speak. So uh, great question on the, on the angle, on the uh, angle headset angle to, to slacken it out a half a degree or a degree or whatever you think you need to do. Um, I wouldn't do it, but if it's your only bike, you know, if, if the Ibis Ripley is your only bike, throw a Fox 36 on there at 140 millimeters and go see it. And if it's not quite enough for your speed or your trails, and that's the other thing I want to talk about, guys, is you got to remember, my this YouTube channel, like I mentioned earlier, it's not like the most entertaining. I don't know how to edit entertaining. I barely know how to edit at all. 
I just do my dorky video and put it on there and it's good content. And I'm a guy who gets to ride lots of bikes. So I become this kind of, uh, you know, sounding board for you guys. And uh, who knows, maybe some of you guys think it's entertaining, but um, all the videos are kind of the same if you haven't noticed. So <laughs> unless you like watching the same types of trails, then, then it can get a little boring. But what my video, what my channel offers is how to help people get the information they need to know as best as I can about bikes, about which bike to get, right? So yeah, it's like MTB Co-op says, I'm the, I'm the MTB guru. Yeah, maybe I'm turning into a little bit of a guru um, about these bikes. But what I've learned to answer your guys' questions when you guys are constantly asking me which bike to get or which you know, you're stuck between two bikes, my answer is, I, I've refined this, you guys, and I'll tell you the answer right now. The first thing I ask the person is, be honest with yourself about your speed. How fast are you riding? And then number two is, is and more specifically about speed, is really answer the question, look at your Strava or look at however you record your data from your rides. How often are you guys going over 25 miles per hour and do you ever go over 30 miles per hour? Because going over 25 miles per hour, even on kind of flowy trails, is still still getting up to high speed. But over 30 miles an hour on flowy or even slightly chunky trails, man, it just starts getting a little out of control and wild on a short travel bike. So if you're constantly doing that, that type of speed, that's when you start looking at the switchblade uh, or the, the Ibis Ritmo, right? If you're never going over 25 or rarely going over 25 miles per hour, look at the Ripley or the Trail 429 because it's going to reward you and be a more sporty, more playful, more fun bike. Um, real quick, I just want to interrupt myself and say we have over 300 people in this live stream right now. So if you would, we only have 68 people who have hit the like button. Just hit the like button. That way it'll just promote this video a little bit. That really helps me a ton, you guys. You have no idea. So I appreciate that. Um, so number one thing is speed. Be honest with yourself about your speed. Number two, be honest about the terrain you ride. Most people are riding blue to blackish terrain, but mostly blue. Most of the riding I do is blue terrain, and I'm hammering it. You know, I'm top 25 in all my downhill segments on a Yeti SB100 and an Ibis Ripley and a Trail 429. Those are the three bikes I owned two to three years ago. And all my downhill times in all my blue trail areas are top 25 downhills in a lot of the areas on those bikes because they hammer you guys. They just rail so hard and so good. The next thing I tell people before they go buy a new bike, and this is worth its weight in gold, what I'm gonna tell you right now. Before you go buy a new bike, consider changing the tires on your bike. Consider rebuilding the fork on your bike because the, the fork starts to feel a little janky after like, I don't know, 50, 60 hours. And it's, you know, it depends how much your shop charges. I think Salt Cycles or any other bike shop around here probably charge you between 70 and 120 bu bucks to rebuild your front fork, the sills and the oil and all that stuff. And then tires, you guys, tires, if you're on a pivot switchblade right now, but you want to have like a bike that's not quite as fatiguing or rolls quite as sluggish, well, take the Minions off. You guys remember, Minions are downhill tires. A Maxxis Minion or a Maxxis Asagai are downhill tires, dudes. Uh, and Enduro tires, I guess that's a thing now, but, but really that's what they were initially intended for. The, the Mavic, or the Mavic, the Maxxis Recon 2.4, dudes, that is such a legit tire for blue trails and black trails. And I rail that tire so hard. The outside lug of that tire, I've got one right here. This is uh, one from my wife's bike. It's a 27.5. It just happened to be sitting there. I did not plan this, I swear to you. But look at this tread, you guys. See this really consistent tread pattern right here? This outside, I'm not doing a very good job of showing you guys. This outside lug right here. So when you guys feel that scary sensation, like, oh shit, like when you're going through a turn, you're losing it. That's usually, especially on a Minion or a Dissector or a Maxxis DHR2. Trust me, guys, I have ridden so many different tires in the last four years. What you're normally feeling is going from the center lug right here, transitioning from the center lug onto the transition lug, which on the Recon is very small. It's this one right here, this inside one right here. But on a Maxxis Minion, the DHF or the Asagai or the DHR2, 
you feel that transition right there, that's what you're feeling. The next step is not you eating it and, and crashing. The next step is hopping onto this really powerful outside lug with a lot of traction. But when you go from the transition lug to the outside lug, you really start to feel it carve in and take place and, and complete that turn. So we're getting way off topic here. This tire shouldn't have been sitting there. But you guys, this tire is my go-to tire right now. I've, I've got hundreds of miles with a, a Dissector 2.4 on the front of my Ripley and this Recon 2.4 on the back of my Ripley. And then I've got even more miles, 1,000 miles or more, with a Recon up front and then the Ardent Race on the back. If you want to support the channel, use the links in the description down below to uh, Competitive Cyclists to purchase this from the affiliate links. Or don't do it. It doesn't even pay me that much money anyway. Just go to your local bike shop and pick it up or wherever you buy your tires. Um, but the Recon, that tire is so money. I would love to, I wish I had time to hop in the comments and hear what you guys are saying about that tire. Um, but but to, to, to hear your guys' experience, but man, the Recon's a killer tire for blue trails and, and black trails. What you're losing when you go to that type of tire is some protection. So the Asagai, the DHR2, and the DHF are all those meaty, big, chunky tires. They have slightly more protection through higher speed, chundry, sharp, square rocks and stuff. They have more traction, obviously, but um, and they have more braking power. That's the other big thing you lose, especially when you go to recon front, ardent race rear, you start to lose braking traction in the rear. And you'll feel that. It just means, I mean, you just have to brake differently. I mean, when you have a big, meaty Maxxis DHR2 out back, man, you can brake so late right before you get to that corner, just grab brake, and then just roll it through that corner. That's a lot of fun. Oh, I can't wait till my freaking trails dry out. There's still snow up there. I can't wait to start riding again. And I'm sick of riding the trainer. Um, anyway, any other questions about the Trail 429 before we absolutely derail this entire live stream and start talking more about tires and all the other crap that there is to talk about? Um, Looks like someone says recon up front, icon out back. That's probably a pretty fast combo for sure. Uh, okay, that's a great question. Taylor Road says, how does the DW link in the Ripley or Trail 429, which by the way, the DW link on the Ripley and the Trail 429 on Ibis and Pivot Bikes is different. It feels different. Um, I, I, have a, I have an email to Chris Kokalis at Pivot. I, I, I replied to the email that he sent me. I said, hey, <clears throat> is there a way that you can get me on the, on the phone to do like an interview? I don't know if an interview is the right thing, but I want to talk to an engineer or somebody who knows their stuff at Pivot because I, I think that my audience, that all of you guys and everybody else on YouTube who watches my channels, I think they would like to hear what's happening on that Trail 429 and that switchblade that is just so so magical, so good um, on climbing. So that's, that's, that's something I would like to do on the channel and I'm, hopefully it's in the, in the works. But back to Taylor's question, um, how does that DW link compare to the, the Revel CBF, the Canfield Balance Formula, right? Um, in the Revel Rascal and the Revel Ranger. And for those of you who watch the channel, I used to own the Revel Rascal, which is their kind of mid, mid travel bike, 130 mil travel bike. Um, is it a big deciding factor for, oh, he's saying it's a big deciding factor for his next bike if um, he can get away with ignoring the climb switch. So yeah, I, I never touched in my Revel Ranger video, Taylor, I never touched the climb switch. That thing just climbs. The Revel rascal also climbs really really well i spent a lot of time on the rebel rascal and the pivot switchblade because though i own those bi bikes back to back but also at the same time for a couple weeks i own the rebel rascal first and then a few months later i bought the pivot switchblade and i own them both for a couple weeks at the same time the switchblade climbs better in technical terrain uh in my in my experience right um also, uh, it just felt more plush, just more 
go mock chicken type of thing, you know? And uh, yeah, I think, I think the CBF is really good, but I think the CBF is better. Uh, the, the better part of the, of the Canfield balance formula, those Revel bikes, the better part of it is not necessarily the climbing, but it's the descending. I thought the descending was really rad. Um, it just felt like that, that 130 mil travel uh, Revel Rascal descends better. It descends as well as the Ibis Ritmo or the Pivot Switchblade with much more travel. It's a bike that descends with much more travel than, than what it, it seems like it should. Wow, Spencer Smith, thank you for the $49.99 super chat. That's incredible. He said, you helped me pick my ride two years ago and still love watching your channel. Keep up the awesome work. Well, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Um, it, it's, it's really nice of you guys to give me those super chats. I, I really appreciate that. And I hope that... Um, I hope that when you guys ask me questions, whether it's in an email or on Instagram, which by the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, Instagram, I only post in the story sections, the little round bubbly part of the top. And it's a lot more like these videos. It's really chill, carefree. It's me fishing with my kids, me riding dirt bikes. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, I have a moto track in my backyard that we ride. And it's a lot of fun to watch all the kids in the neighborhood ride dirt bikes in my backyard. And But me fishing with my kids and, uh, going biking all the time and riding dirt bikes in the backyard. I mean, we're, we're riding dirt bikes every day, even in the winter. My, my four-year-old daughter, I mean, that's sort of like her favorite thing to do is go ride dirt bikes with me. So, uh, you know, and you also get to see more closely what I'm doing on my YouTube channel. Like, for example, on my YouTube channel, you don't get to see this, but I've got my, uh, my bikes all here. If you guys can see that, the camera's not too shaky. You know, I've got my... Uh, my, my Rocky Mountain Altitude here, which is set up as a mullet. So 29 inch front wheel, 27.5 inch rear wheel. You know, I've just got all this stuff here. Uh, so uh, Instagram is a much easier for, uh, way for me to communicate and you know, hang out with, with, with you guys and share what I'm doing. Um, the other cool thing is like, I'm not a very good YouTuber, you guys. You've, you probably figured that out, out at this point. I'm not a great YouTuber. I'm not great at editing. I don't particularly uh, enjoy editing process or filming process. I'm not an overly creative or artsy type of person, but I am a sales, like I, I'm a salesman for a living at work. So it's really easy for me to want to talk and engage and hang out and get to know people. I love getting to know people. In fact, three or four of my current best friends are people that I met randomly. Like at a gas station, I met him. Or my buddy Jake, who's a really good friend of mine. I just ran into him with, with my bike. I hit him. <laughs> I hit Jake with my bike in a bike race. We hit bikes. We both, like five of us crashed in a, in a road race, in a bike race. And that was like back in 2013 or something or 2014. And we've been good friends ever since. We just were down in St. George. Anyway. My point is I love to meet people and talk and communicate. This part's easy for me. Being creative and artsy and making a mullet video with that Rocky Mountain. I mean, people would probably love to see that Rocky Mountain mullet video, but I have not taken the time. It's not easy for me to produce a video like that. Or like, I'd love to show you other videos I have, but I'm just not, I'm not a good YouTuber guy, but I keep doing it because of you guys because of all the people who reach out to me on Instagram or in the comment section below these videos. Like I see a value where I'm like Spencer, the guy that just gave me a $50 super chat, which you know you really don't have to do that. I kind of feel bad about it. Um, but you know, I love that I was able to help him find his right bike two years ago. That's why I started the channel. The very first video I ever produced was not with the intent to be a YouTuber. I literally had just spent $5,000 on a bike. And I'd read so much online in the forums about how the bike shreds the gnar, or like, we use these words, right, in these forums. But the problem with the forums is you don't know if you're talking to a 74-year-old guy or a 14-year-old guy or some just computer warrior guy. And he's saying the bike shreds, well, for him, maybe it shreds at 12 miles an hour, or maybe it shreds at 38 miles per hour. It's really hard for me to put my finger on the guy on the forum. And then the other option that we had before YouTube 
The other option we had besides forums was pro riders giving us their endorsement. But these dudes could ride any bike, it doesn't matter. Richie Rude could ride any bike he wants. Bernard Kerr, or whatever the guy's name who rides for a pivot, the dude's insanely talented and athletic. I mean, these are real athletes, professional athletes. So what about me, the dad with three kids, the guy who works all day? I've got a good job and good money to go buy a nice bike, but I don't wanna just blow $7,000 on something, especially if there might be something better. We, we always have that fear, right? That fear of like, oh man, there might be something better. What if I get this, you know, I don't wanna head down that road too far, but my point is, is I think my, my YouTube resonates with you guys, and the reason why I've liked doing it and kept doing it, because I'm a normal dad, 38 years old, I've ridden mountain bikes my whole life. I've been riding, my first mountain bike I got when I was like seven years old. And I've been riding mountain bikes and I raced them in high school a little bit. And I raced later on in my life a little bit. And I, 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 I've gotten to a point where I'm, uh, you know, I'm, an, I'm probably a little better than the average rider. Um, not much better. My, my friends that you see in my videos are, are definitely better than average. They're, they're very good riders. But um, I'm good enough that I think I can give you guys an idea of what it's like. So you can watch the video and you can say, my speed's a little faster than Jason. Um, I think that my speed is a little faster or my trails are slightly more difficult. So I might use that experience to make my decision. Or huh, maybe my, my speed might be a little less than that. Or maybe my trails aren't quite as gnarly as that trail. So maybe I don't need quite that much bike. Anyway, that was the whole intent of the videos. And that's why I still do them today. And that's why they're on the same trail all the time and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, I hope that helps. Um, we've had over 300 people in here for almost the entire hour that we've been doing this tonight. I hope that this has been helpful for you guys. Um, we usually wrap it up, up at about the hour to hour and 15 minute mark. And uh, I don't know what else to tell you guys about the Trail 429. Um, for me, I, I think I think it's probably the bike to get if you're in that price range. It's just so good. Um, the Ibis Ripley, if you're a lighter weight rider, I would still get the Ripley for sure. It just feels a little sportier, a little easier to ride, a little more responsive. Um, I really, really like it a lot. Um, I'm gonna have a video coming out about the two bikes. If you're over 185 pounds, uh, you know, either bike, but, but really that 200 pound mark, I think that that, excuse me, I think that that rear triangle on the Trail 429 is stiffer. Um, the other reason, and uh, I wanted to say this earlier, but I, you know, before you all leave, I, I thought I should say this too. The other deciding factor for me, honestly, guys, on the Trail 429, and I hate to say this, the reason why I want the Ripley instead of the Trail 429 is because of the Super Boost rear axle. So at the moment, I've got a Yeti SB130 at my house. I've got a Rocky Mountain Altitude at my house, a Yeti SB115 at my house. Um, and all those have standard boost axle rear spacing. So if I want to swap wheels, which I often do, swap wheels between bikes, on the Trail 14, I wouldn't be able to. I ran into that a couple times when I owned the Pivot Switchblade. And it's a really real hangup for guys like me or if you guys own more than one bike at a time, it's a real reason to not buy the bike. And, um, you know, now if I owned a Switchblade and a Trail 429, well, geez, problem solved. They have the same rear axle spacing. And for those of you guys who don't know what I'm talking about, the spacing in the rear axle is either uh, 148 centimeters or 157 centimeters, I think is boost spacing. and. Uh, so the, the, the bikes are not as compatible. They make spacers. I don't like to deal with that kind of stuff. Um, for me, it kind of came down to that as well. Um, yeah, I just, uh, the rear axle spacing and like I said, I could just about flip a, flip a coin, um, on the, on the two bikes. They're both really good. If I weighed more and I don't know how much more because I haven't ridden the bike, the bike's weighing more, but just from other people's experiences. So last thing, I keep saying last thing. So Jason Hawkins, who is one of the owners of Salt Cycles. So Chris and Amy are brothers and sisters. 
and Amy's husband, Jason, the three of them own salt cycles. Nicest people on the whole freaking planet. Amazing. Jason Hawkins is one of the le most like legit fastest riders in Utah. He wins the enduro races in the pro level. I mean, he's a legit high speed rider. And uh, he recently rode the Pivot Trail 429 and he came to me and he said, Jason, I think I realize why you like the Ibis Ripley so much. Because going from my, my Pivot Switchblade, this is Jason speaking, he's six foot four, like 190 pounds probably, he's a skinny guy, but he's tall. Um, he said, going from my Switchblade, which has a Fox 36 on the front of it, and he had a, an X2 on there for a while, but then he went back to the DPX2. Anyway, he charges like insanely hard on bikes, right? Going from the Switchblade to the Trail 429, he's like, oh my gosh, dude, that is the bike. That Trail 429 is the bike. Uh, and he normally just rides that big Switchblade everywhere. And he says, I think I know why you like that Ripley so much. The same experience is, hey, there's my daughter. Hi, Elin. How are you, sweetheart? My wife just picked up my daughter from, uh, from dance and she probably wanted to hop in the live stream to say hi to me. Uh, anyway, um, the Ibis Ripley with that light traction tune rear shock, the DPS2 shock that has that light traction tune, for me, a lighter weight rider, is probably the same experience that Jason, 190 pounds, hard charging guy, um, the same experience he's getting on that Trail 429. So just remember that I'm a lighter weight rider. Um, yeah, for sure. We have another super chat here from D. Allison. It says, uh, have you ridden or plan to ride the new Stump Jumper? Uh, has flex stays, 130, 140. Yes, 100%. I actually talked to a local bike shop owner of a brand that uh, who carries Specialized. He has the Specialized Stump Jumper uh, for me to ride, but he also has the Epic Evo, which the Epic e Evo has been so high up on my list of bikes that I want to get out and ride. Um, I also want to ride the new Giant Trance. Um, somebody from Idaho, which by the way, the nicest thing, this guy named Dustin Johnson, I think is his name on Instagram, just out of the blue yesterday, he sends me a comment and says, hey, I'm in Idaho. I'm driving down to Moab at the end of the month with three or four of my buddies to go riding. Would you like me to stop in, in Draper and ride with you and you can ride my size medium evil the following? Or yeah, evil the following. And I said, oh my gosh, he has a brand new evil following that he said I could borrow so I could do a video on. Because evil followings are so hard to get. So I guess what I'm saying is if you're in Utah or around this area or in Idaho or somewhere nearby and ride a size medium bike that I have not yet ridden, whether it's a Niner or a Scott or a Norco or any of these other bikes that people are asking me to ride, if you are a size medium with a and you want me to ride it and review it, that's an opportunity because with COVID, demo by, or, uh, demo drivers for these, you know, like the Ibis demo truck is not going out. The Scott demo truck is not going out. So I have far fewer uh, opportunities to ride demo bikes, but also it's just been so hard to get a hold of of, of any bikes lately to ride. And so if you have a size who has a size medium bike, who would be generous enough and kind enough to come ride miles with me, come on, come on down. I'd love to host you. Um, I, I could show you around. I show you what my trails are all about. And uh, man, I think you guys would uh, have a fun time riding my trails with me. Hey, you're home. Um, so if you have a size medium bike, hit me up. And here, come here. This is our 10 year old who is just texting me in the chat. Okay, you need to go get ready for bed. Uh, she just got home from dance. So um, anyway, Dustin Johnson, thank you so much. That's very generous of you to offer your uh, evil, uh, the following for a bike review. Um, I don't know why I didn't think about that earlier. I should have been reaching out like on local Facebook forums or in other ways uh, to just ride other, you know, customers' bike or people's bikes. Um, I should ask the bike shops if they have any customers if I can ride their bikes. I didn't think about that. That's been a real struggle is getting the, that's why I didn't post as much videos last year is because it's, uh, yeah, you know. Oh, Bikesome says, she said hi, Dad, like 10 times. Well, she was trying to get my attention. 
She's got to get my attention, you know. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, no, by some Dustin Johnson is not the pro golfer. Like at least I don't think he is. He wouldn't be riding a size medium. That guy's yoked. All right, guys. Nine forty-two Utah time. Um, if there's anything else that we need to talk about, let's talk about it. I mean, we still have 270 people in here. So if there's something we want to talk about before we leave, uh, we can do that. Last thing, actually, I'm just going to tease you with this a little bit. So I am going to take this whole thing much more serious this year. I'm, going to pl I'm really going to focus on weekly uploads. I've put so much time and energy into this YouTube channel for it to not be benefiting me. I got to turn my wife's phone off real quick that my daughter was listening to. Um, there we go. Um, I put so much time and energy into this, this YouTube channel that for it to not be making sense for me to keep doing it longer would be a real shame, right? But I, I will tell you, it has be become increasingly difficult, especially as my children are getting older, to, to find the time to do it. And for, for, for those of you who have a side hustle or a hobby or, or a YouTuber, you'll be able to understand what I'm saying here. But um, I've hired a producer. I'm paying someone monthly. It's like a consultant, but you know we're calling him a producer to get me on track, to line up bikes for me to ride and do some of the hard things that I really struggle with, the creative part, the artistic part, the editing part. So um, I'm, I'm currently about a month into working with someone who's helping me stay on track and get and, and start treating this YouTuber, uh, this YouTube with, with, with more respect and, and more focus. But it has been really hard to answer everyone's comments and everyone's questions in, in the descriptions below the videos and also in, in my Instagram chats and most particularly in my emails. People will send me very long emails or very long Instagram messages and I'll end up spending a half of an hour trying to give this person who I really care that I, I want to help them this really appropriate answer of what I think about a certain thing, right? Uh, so he is going to get started with a Patreon. And I, I've never wanted to do Patreon up to this point because I don't feel like I had anything to really offer more than what I was currently doing. But Patreon, it, you know, if he ends up doing it and gets the Patreon thing going, will be an opportunity for you guys to go on and uh, it, it'll be a platform for me to give more time and more attention to people who have very sincere questions, who are very thoughtful. And, and the reason why is, okay, so for example, a few years ago, I decided to pick up surfing. And I've surfed a couple times throughout my life, but I live in Utah. So I only get a chance to surf maybe two or three times a year. And I've tried a number of different boards at this point. And surfing, oh man, if you think trying to find the right bike is hard, try being a skier. Finding the right skis is much more difficult than finding the right bike, although the barrier to entry in skiing is significantly lower. You can get skis for between $400 and $1,200 for, for a set of skis and bindings, right? So surfing. I don't live in California. I vacation to Hawaii and to California and these places to go surfing, but I, I've tried a, di a number of different boards and I thought, you know what, I just, I, I, so I got on Instagram, long story short. I got on Instagram and I reached out to a professional surfing coach who has an Instagram presence. And I said, hey, you know, I started texting him in the DMs. I said, hey, I know you probably get a million questions all the time. Um, I'm a guy that surfs two or three times a year. I live in Utah. I'm athletic. I can get up on the board well. I can turn down the face of the wave well, but I'd like to be more consistent. And I'd like to buy a board that I can take with me. So I have my own board, so I'm always riding the same board, but I don't really know where to start, and I don't really, I don't really care to find out where to start in which surfboard I should get. So if, you would, if, you, if you'd be so kind to, to reply back, and also include your Venmo. So I can Venmo you $10 for your time. And I offered that to him and he responded to me lickety split, it was incredible. Um, I did the same thing with a professional uh, cross country mountain bike racer. I was going down to a race. It looked like there was gonna be rain in the race. And I was like, ah, crap, I, I'm not stoked on my tire setup. I thought, I wonder what Taylor's riding, this, this pro rider. I did the same thing, reached out to him on Instagram. And anyway, Patreon, I believe, will be a more appropriate place for me to really spend time with people who really want uh, 
uh, to lean on me. Uh, people are already leaning heavily on me for information about bikes because of the unique opportunity I have developed with this channel to ride bikes. So where I don't offer a lot of artistic or creative uh, or entertaining content on this channel, I do offer um, a voice of reason or a sounding board uh, where I ride a lot of these different bikes. So Patreon will be a place for those of you who really want me to hold your hand through the purchasing experience uh, to do so there. And also um, there'll be some benefits to doing it as well because uh, um, you'll be able to pick up your bike from Salt Cycles. Even if you're from out of town, you can call Chris at Salt Cycles and get a very unique custom bike build opportunity. He builds some imp incredible, beautiful bikes. And we've done this for a number of people already where they've flown out here, they picked up their bike, and I showed up at Salt Cycles and we go riding for the night. They end up buying a Salt Cycles jersey or whatever they want to do. And it's a really cool experience. So if that's interesting to you, that will be a, a platform over on Patreon to do that. Um, yeah, I, I would love to have hopped into the comments at this point to see what you guys are, are talking about, but, um, oh, it looks like we have more super chats. Well, thank you. Thank you for the tips. So travel the narrow trail says, will you offer a can of Coco joy for us to ride with you? <laughs> yes. If you, <laughs> yes, I will offer, I got to reach out to Coco joy and get sponsored by them, I guess, but Yeah. You'll get a you'll get a Coco Joy when you show up to, to Utah to ride with with Yum Yum and uh, with Jason and uh, pick up your bike from Salt Cycles. Truly, guys, I know I've been kind of, you know, honestly, Chris at Salt Cycles can build up some of the nicest looking custom bikes. The people that have shown up from my YouTube channel to Utah, who've flown in here from Florida and Ohio and California and all over the place. Which also, if I've helped you buy your bike or influenced you in any way. Uh, in your bike decision, when you post your new bike on YouTube on uh, Instagram, tag at uh, MTB Yum Yum. That way, I can repost it on my channel. I would love to repost anyone who I've helped in any way, whether I help them choose some tires or a certain bike or whatever the case may be. I would love to share that with anyone who follows me. Even if just my mom is the only person on Instagram that sees it, she'll be at least proud of me that I'm helping someone find the right bike. So uh, yeah, for sure tag me. And if you come out to Utah and I ride with you and you pick up a custom bike from Salt Cycles, call Chris, 801-943-8502. Then travel the narrow trail, yes. I will bring you a can of Coco Joy. That's worth $2. Hopefully by then I can get sponsored, not at the pay for the Coco Joy. Um, Somebody took mine, uh, just gave me a $4.99 super chat. Thank you, somebody took mine. It says, any hint on what video you might be uploading next? That's an excellent question. The next video is going to be, uh, and I would love to start doing this as I start getting more consistent as this, this guy that I've hired, this producer guy, um, He's going to get on me more to where I'll be at the beginning of the thing. I'll say on today's episode, blah, 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 blah. And at the end, I'll be saying, tune in next week where we'll be doing blah, 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 blah. Uh, at some point, we're going to get to that. I don't do it right now because I don't want to be stuck having to upload every single week. If I've got a family thing or need to spend more time with the kids or if the wife and I need to get away and spend some alone time or whatever the situation might be, right? I don't want to be too married to it, but... Right now, the goal is week, weekly uploads. But yes, somebody took mine. I, I'll give you better than a hint. I'll tell you what the next video will be. It will be the Trail 429 versus the Switchblade video. And ah, man, I really wish I could have gotten time on the Enduro because I can't believe how many people are interested in that bike. When I saw that Pivot had released that the, the standard Trail 429 and then the Enduro model, I just, at first I was just like, Man, I, I'm, I'm, sh I'm shocked that they did it, A. Well, I guess I shouldn't be, but, but I'm, I was surprised at how many people were so interested in that Enduro build, because I wasn't. Because I, also because I know how capable the standard Trail 429 is. I know how capable my Ibis Ripley is, right? And these bikes are just so capable, I think people are sometimes shocked um, until they get on it, uh, what high level of speed these bikes are still capable at. And so the next video will be Trail 429 versus Switchblade. Um, those of you who watched this 
uh, live stream will have gotten obviously a bit of information about what I think about that. But uh, I think it's a worthwhile video. I did one years ago, a year or two ago uh, on that topic. It ended up doing like 60,000 views. So I think people were very interested in it. Um, so that's, that's the next video. Uh, the video after that will probably be the new bike day video, which for those of you who've been on this live stream, you guys already know, my new bike was the Ripley. And if you guys haven't seen it yet, I ought to walk over there with the camera and show you. It's, it's really very, a good looking bike. Um, all right, it's almost 10 o'clock guys, but we still have 235 people in here. We've had more people in this live stream for longer than any other time. In fact, if you're in here, hit the like button. If you don't know what that is, it's the little thumbs up thing. Hit that, that really helps me out a lot. I appreciate it. Um, for those of you looking for bike stuff, uh, if you choose to use the affiliate links in the uh, description below this video or any of my videos, uh, it's a huge help to me. It helps pay me a small commission through that affiliate program. Um, and if you don't, it's not, not, that, not that big of a deal. I don't make a lot of money from it to begin with, uh, but it does help and it's a way you can support the channel and support me and keep me what I'm doing. And if you have a YouTuber out there that you really like, if there's a certain YouTuber that you just really like, whether it's mountain biking or otherwise, um, try to support them in some way, even if it's not monetarily, just in some way, because it's a lot of work uh, <laughs> to run a channel and to do it. And it doesn't, you know, yeah. So, you know, try to, try to support those people, even if it's not monetarily, just in some way with a little pat on the back or something. So um, thanks for everyone who's in the chat. I'm gonna go back and read through the chat right now because I didn't have a moment hardly to, to hop in the chat. Thank you so much for, for those of you who contributed uh, monetarily tonight with the with the super chats. That's that's uh, that's incredible. Thank you. And and Spencer who gave me the fifty dollar one. I almost feel bad about that. You guys certainly do not need to do that amount. I I appreciate it. So uh, thank you uh, thank you to uh, Bill and to Michael for moderating tonight to keeping it all uh, all on the up and up. Uh, you know. We have such a good community of, of, of mountain bikers in here. And um, we've talked, uh, for those of you who are still around right now, th this will probably resonate with you more than, than people who watch this after the fact, because you guys are the guys who, who kind of like to hang out with this community. You like what we're doing here. So the 230 people that are still in here, um, we're also going to do, I hate to, to commit to it too much, but we're also going to do an opportunity for you to come out and ride with, with, with me and, and on my trails. We're gonna do a tour here where you can come out here, we'll, we'll rent a big house and you can come stay at the house. We'll all stay together, we'll eat meals together. <laughs> maybe you, maybe that doesn't sound interesting to you, but I have a couple friends that have done this with motorcycle tours, where they go motorcycle tours. I have some friends that have done fly fishing tours. And uh, you know what, I, I thought, what the heck, we should do a mountain bike one here in Utah. So we're gonna do a St. George one, which we'll go down and ride for a couple days. The, uh, the trails that you've seen in my St. George videos. We're gonna do a Moab one. Some people have never been to Moab or to Arches National Park, which is right next to Moab. That would be an incredible vacation for you guys. If you have some brothers or sisters or wives or husbands and wives who wanna come, or if you have a group of friends who wanna come, this is a way for you to get a personal guide service from me with uh, one of my, my buddies, Mike, who's uh, 50 years old, he's a little older than me, but he, has owned a bike shop for 20 years, and he rides more than anyone I know. He's an incredible rider, and uh, he'll come with us, and he knows every trail. He knows all the extra credit sections of trails. He would give you the time of your life, I promise you. Uh, if you flew here with your friends to ride Moab, you would not get the experience that you would get from coming with me and Mike or St. George, where I've spent thousands of miles on those trails. It would be a really cool opportunity. It's something that I've been wanting to do. I would love to get to know, I mean, I'm just talking to a, you guys gotta realize I'm just talking to my phone right now. I've got my iPhone sitting right here that I talk to. Um, but I would love to get to know get to know some of you guys and go riding with you. So we'll do a St. George one, a Moab one, and then a, a, a one out here in Salt Lake where we can ride, uh, you know, Corner Canyon, which is where these trails are that you see in a lot of my videos. And then we'd also ride up in Park City and American Fork Canyon. It's incredible high alpine riding that would just blow your socks off. And again, We'd have the guide, uh, Mike, guiding us, and, and I'd be helping as well. And I just think it'd be a really cool time for you and some buddies to sign up and come, or like I said, maybe you and some buddies and your wives to come. Whatever you guys wanted to do, we could, we could sort it out. 
We'll probably start with those three tours. Um, that will probably be a function of Patreon as well as is what my producer is thinking. This, uh, you know, I hate to call it a producer. He's producing this this channel, this content. So, but he's the he's a consultant. He knows how to do this type of stuff, and I don't. <laughs> so he's crucial in the in the component of this whole thing. But um, if you are interested in doing these guides, and I've done this before, email me. Email me. Uh, it's mtbyumyum at gmail.com. mtbyumyum at gmail.com. Email me, and we can get the ball rolling on this. I don't know exactly how much it's going to cost, um, but there's going to be a, you know, I, I you know, Kevin, the guy I'm working with, has to get insurance and do a few other little things for us to actually do this. But um, we're going to do it. Uh, I think it's going to be super fun. I've been excited to get to know some of you guys. So, uh, yeah, John just said Patreon makes sense for Jason. Yeah, you know, it, it doesn't in that I'm an artistic guy or a creative guy, but in the sense that I can really help people spend more time with people, hold their hand through the bike purchase which might sound crazy to some of you, but you guys would not believe the amount of comments and questions I get in my Instagram and my email. There's a huge um, amount of people that are looking for help in that situation, and I'm happy to do it, um, but it, you know, it needs to be in a platform like Patreon where, where we can really focus and give you guys the attention that I, I need to give you. Um, all right, well, uh, thanks for watching, guys. We still have 220 people in here. This is crazy. Um, yeah, we're, we're almost 10 o'clock right now. So uh, again, Bill and Michael, thank you for moderating. Thank you all of you for the super chats. And just thanks for watching my channel, hanging out here. Uh, I love talking bikes. I love talking tires. Uh, I love just talking about whatever. I just love getting to know people. So it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we'll see you guys next Sunday when we post the, the, the Pivot 12429 and the, uh, the Switchblade video. And uh, we probably won't do a live stream after that just because it's, it's a lot, but um, fun hanging out with you guys, though, and uh, we'll see.